Okay, so we just wrapped up this system here. Figured I'd give a little walk through this one because this is using a single pump with some zone valves. So I get a lot of people that ask uh, whether you go with zone valves or uh, circulator for each zone. It really all depends on the system design. So um, what I like to do is sort of take all the information of the existing heating zone. So for this one, it is uh, going to be for baseboards. Um, this one had actually relatively shorter loops of baseboards. Um, shorter meaning in the range of uh, 20 to 30 feet. Now, um, there's no hard or fast rule. I mean, you really have to do the calculations and do the math to determine uh, how many BTUs are required, how many gallons per minute you need to flow, what is the head pressure. Uh, so there's a lot involved in it to do it correctly. Um, but for this system, I was able to do, like I said, a single pump and use zone valves according to uh, each zone. So all of these are within the 20 to 30 um, foot range on of baseboard. So What's going to happen here is when any of the thermostats, and the thermostats will get wired directly into the circuit board that's under here, um, when a specific zone calls, and I've actually labeled them on the uh, zone valves as you can see here. So when the corresponding zone 1 calls, it's going to um, turn on the pump and fire the boiler. So the boiler will get the command from the thermostat. It will then turn on what's called the system pump, uh, the main pump in a boiler configuration with zone valves is always called the system pump. Um, the boiler itself has a pump inside of it that is just for the primary loop. So this one is the system pump. Uh, so what that's going to do when there's a call from the thermostat is turn on the boiler pump, which will circulate the water in the primary manifold. And then it's also going to trigger on the uh, system pump, which is then going to pull water from the return and push it into the corresponding zone. So the zone one valve will open up when it gets that call. And these are really cool. These are Taco Sentry zone valves. Um, they do have a manual turn that you could push down and, and turn in. And I actually had this air tested here, so you heard some air come out. But if you push and turn, that'll open the valve manually and you could push and turn and close it. Um, it also has a motor inside that a capacitor that'll charge up and turn the motor when the zone calls. Um, and then they will automatically close back when the call for heat has uh, disappeared. So uh, those are really cool. They're really nice because if you ever had to replace one of these units, you could actually just pop off these connectors here and you can press the little clip in here and prop, pop this actuator right off so you could change this unit. Um, obviously, if there's something wrong with the ball valve itself, you would have to replace that. Uh, so I did put threaded uh, fittings on here so that the pro press would not have to be cut and redone. Um, let's see, and I think this customer is actually going to be, uh, I'm providing him some sweat fittings that'll thread in here because he wants to do uh, sweat for the rest of uh, up to the baseboard. So uh, that's kind of how that works. I'll just go ahead and plug these back in here. And that's pretty much it for this system. Um, has all the usual components, air separation, uh, magnetic filter to keep the uh, components inside the boiler nice and clean and taken care of uh, make the unit last as long as possible. I also always put on these uh, purge and drain valves here so that you can bleed out the system. Anytime you have um, baseboard systems or radiant heat that is above the boiler, meaning if this thing's sitting in a basement and your first floor and second floor have zones on it, heating zones, it's going to be really hard to get all the air out of the system. So what I like to do is put these on here. What you could do is in this position, this will be normal operating position. The water will simply flow through and back through the boiler as normal. However, in this position, it's going to block flow back to the boiler, which forces the water to come out of this port if you open this smaller valve here. So what you would do is hook up a drain hose, just a garden hose, drain that into a sink or a bucket. Um, and then you would feed the water into the boiler normally. And instead of it being being able to either come back this way through the return, it's going to force it through the loop, force it out of this valve, and be able to bleed all the air. And I do an individual valve for each one. You can do shutoff valves and then one, one single purge, uh, but it's nice to be able to just control one zone at a time if needed. So that's the way I do it. Um, if you guys like these videos, please go ahead, comment below, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, definitely subscribe. Tons of videos. Uh, if you really want to learn about boiler systems, check out my other videos. If you do have specific questions and you'd like to contact me, my information is in the, uh, it'll be in the description as well as um, on my main channel info. Um, email me, comment. 
I love answering you guys' questions. If you need any consulting, uh, whether it be to build your own system or any advice or recommendations, what I've been doing a lot lately is getting a lot of uh, customers that have had a system installed and they're noticing that it may not have been done correctly. There's missing components. Uh, so definitely reach out to me. I could sort of walk through those things with you, look at photos of your system. You know, maybe we could correct some things that have been done wrong. And if need be, uh, maybe even give you some, some ammo to go back with uh, to whoever installed and be able to tell them to do it correctly or get some money back. So uh, call me, email me, subscribe if you haven't yet. We'll see you guys on the next one.